one. Good evening and welcome to the um, finance subcommittee meeting of the Brockton School Committee. Today is Tuesday, March 15th, 2022, and the time is 6.02 p.m. I'm going to uh, do a roll call to establish a quorum. Uh, Mr. Homer? Here. Ms. Ehlers? Here. Mr. Rodriguez? Here. Mr. Sullivan? Here. And Joyce Asak, I'm present. So um, welcome, and let's see what we have here. Um, we have a quorum. We're good. Um, item number one on our agenda for the evening is the FY 2023 budget update. And uh, Superintendent, if you can lead us. Sure. So um, this is our first look at um, that we'll go over the numbers that uh, received from the governor's budget. And obviously, those change when they go through the House and Senate. We usually add things. Um, and then obviously, they have the joint committee that then meets and comes up with the final budget for the, the governor to sign. So we're still a little bit away from that process. Um, there are things that we can make requests for through our, you know, our local reps. Uh, I talked to Mike Brady to, today, and he'll be meeting about Department of Ed um, funding for education further. So um, the House and Senate usually um, will change this. And over the years, <coughs> excuse me, and even at tough budget times, they've always added to the governor's budget. Um, so uh, Chris is going to go over again. This is the first look at it. Uh, we'll look at it tonight about you know the numbers of where we are with funding, what came in through the um, the new Student Opportunity Act money, uh, and then um, obviously in the coming weeks we'll come back to much more detail about you know positions and some other things we have to do to make sure we get the budget uh, the budget balance. So Chris will walk us through and then would stop us at any time and ask any questions at all. I know you know Kathy and Jared are new and you know again just feel free to. We have plenty of time an hour, so feel free to ask Chris any questions on myself. Great. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Mike. Uh, good evening, everyone. So um, like the superintendent said, uh, this is just preliminary numbers. Um, this is all based on the governor's proposed budget. So if you turn to the second page, uh, it gives you an itemized list of the local aid estimates um, back from FY20 to what we've received currently from the governor. Um, we had an increase, a gain in Chapter 78 of less than $12 million. Um, less, less all the assessments, the tuitions, the charter, set the charter tuition, as well as the school choice tuition, leaves us a net of $9.8 million, which is uh, well below where we want it to be. But uh, with uh, enrollment being drastically down, our aid also goes down. By the enrollment, so um, they had on October 1st numbers down 754 students um, at an estimate of 16,000 per student. Um, so that's 12 million, so that's where you see the drop. Um, last year we received 23 million in new Student Opportunity Act money. This year we we're about 11.6, and again, uh, we would have been 12 more if we stayed, if those 754 students stayed with us. Um, so that's where you see the difference in um, the Student Opportunity Act, fund, the extra funding. Correct. So COVID played a huge part where a lot of our students went to charter schools um, and other districts that stayed uh, in school that did not become remote. So that's where a large portion of our, our enrollment uh, went. Can I ask a question? Sure. <clears throat> Is 16000 per student average? Is that we like get a, our number is a little bit more because it's factored in with um, low income uh, students with disabilities and also English language learners. So our per pupil is a little higher, um, okay. pretty much the same as most of your gateway cities. Mm -hmm. And what is the variance between what we lost and where we need to be for headcount? Do we know? Well, uh, we lost 784 students. So we're, and we're down 2,000 overall okay. over the last three years. Okay, thank so you. That's we what were I right at. around, uh, we hovered at 17,000 uh, for several years. It stayed flat. Mm -hmm. um, and now over the, last, um, over the last two to three years, it's, it's been dropping slowly. Mm -hmm. um, 
but was drastically dropped with the 754 because of you know because of COVID, the pandemic. Um, so you know we'd like to obviously get our enrollment back up. Um, mm -hmm. I also uh, Jess has in Masia Andra Serper has been doing some outreach to the families that left. Um, a lot of people have moved out of state, mm -hmm. uh, citing the expenses. Uh, a lot of people have moved more further south than Brockton because Brockton, the rents are high, the home prices are high, which is good for people's obviously property values, but uh, people that struggle and obviously lost their jo jobs through COVID um, had a tough time paying their rents here. So they had a lot have moved towards, because I talked to the superintendents in Fall River and New Bedford and their enrollments are pretty much where they were last year. So I think you see a lot of people that are moving further away from Boston where it's a little, you know, the rent and the house prices are a little cheaper. Yeah, I was wondering if there was any other communities that it was obvious where they were absorbing the students that we were losing. And if they maintained, they probably did pick up right. some of ours for sure. Um, okay, thank you. Sure. Um, so if anybody has any more questions on the local aid, we'll move on to the next page, um, which is our proposed budget. <laughs> Now if we all look at the top FY23, our estimated revenue from the city is 208 million. We're taking, we're taking in some revenue from ESSER 3 and revenue from other sources, which is circuit breaker money, uh, money that we receive for our special ed students. That brings us to a budget of 215 million. Um, and then expenses on the next section, your personal certified staff, 152 million. Non-certified, 31 million. Ordinary maintenance, 32, and out-of-state travel of 20. So, as you can see, we have a shortfall of about a million and a half. But again, these are proposed numbers. We're still working. We, st I still need to meet with the CFO on the city side, as well as meeting with the mayor, uh, with the superintendent, um, to go over um, insur health insurance costs, which play a huge factor with all the employees that we've hired in the past uh, year. So the city side needs to take that into account, um, and then we develop a budget together. So, and then if you look at the lower part, can I ask part, you a question? Sure, sure, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. So yeah, with no the problem. deficit of 1.5, currently, yes. Just this is probably more for you, Mike. So are we going into this proposed budget <clears throat> kind of like you know how everybody goes in with their wish list, but there's room to shave off? I'm wondering. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So okay. Uh, the good news is that there'll be no layoffs. Okay. We do not have to lay off anyone. Um, but because we're down 754 students and have been down, um, we are well staffed. Um, we actually have more staff now than we did when we had 17,000 students. And again, some of that is because of the needs of kids. Yep. Um, some, um, obviously, we have much, many more adjustment counselors than we had, and, and we need to keep mm -hmm. um, and add probably a few more. But uh, as far as like, we have some pockets of really low class size at some elementaries and some middle schools. I mean, really low. And, you know, that's great when you talk about, you know, some of 15, 16. Yeah. Um, it's, not, it's not sustainable to be able to um, maintain those real low numbers. And, you know, Dr. Zakowitz, uh, who obviously consults all over the country, and she'll be the first one to tell you about when you read the research and after pretty much kid in the garden, first grade and second grade, where it's important to have smaller class sizes. When you get up into the upper levels, class size, it doesn't really reflect, you know, you can't have 40, obviously, yeah, yeah. but um, but in numbers like in, you know, mid to late, you know, high 20s, which are more, is more sustainable and, you know, kids succeed um, and class size has a lot less to do in those, the higher grade levels with student achievement than, you know, K1 and 2. So we really have pockets of class size that, that are low. So we probably, right now we have 60 open, um, unfilled um, BEA positions, certified staff that are now either, we haven't been able to fill because you, you know our sta the staffing issues this year. Yep. And that's like that all over the state. So there's 60, we have another 20 retirements coming up this year. So right now we're about 80 positions that are currently open. Mm -hmm. um, so some of this, some of balance in this budget with the lack of um, the enrollment and the extra money coming in will be done through attrition. And again, that will be done through areas where 
um, there's you know, class is, yeah, this class size is just so low that you would, you know, you would not replace teachers that are leaving. Um, so there's the good news is there'll be no layoffs at all. Okay, good. That's kind of what I was yeah. getting at. Just so, to make and I sure. think at the end of the, you know, we'll talk about a retirement incentive in the next budget, but I think that's, uh, something where you'll see more, um, there's a chance you'll have more people retiring. So that's where you'll get your cushion of mm -hmm. how we decide. And that way we can see if you don't have to, you know, replace, you know, teach some teachers and some other staff, then then you can look at some of the wish list items that we want to put back or put in for programs and things like that. But that's exactly what I was going to say is like, if we have some wiggle room here and we're able to, you know, when we do get the final numbers, if it does make up some of the 1.5, I would want to leave those pockets to use as opportunities, you know, wiggle room later on in the year for whatever we need right. or want. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And just like uh, the superintendent said, once the, um, the state, and the House comes back, mm -hmm. the Senate and the, and the House. Uh, usually that number co does come up a little bit, so that helps us. But as some of you well know, we've gone through some really lean years, and $1.5 million de uh, variance is really nothing. I do so, have one more question. Sure. The revenue um, based on the governor's, basically based on the governor's budget, the revenue for the city, how do you, what's the methodology behind that number? How do you come up with that number? So we take, so if you look at the first page, the mm -hmm. local aid of 9.8, we have a, <clears throat> a proposed uh, fund, available funds of 9.887 million. Mm -hmm. We just tacked that on to the FY22, what we received from the city mm -hmm. last year. Oh, And all we right. just added on. Okay, yeah. all right. I didn't yeah. think it was that simple. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Anyone else have any questions or comments? You want to, Chris, we non-net? Yeah, so the non, I'm, I'm, I apologize. So the non-net section below, um, this is our transportation. So this, this part of the budget is balanced. Um, the revenue from the city, um, we're projecting about 12 million. Uh, revenue from other sources, again, this is circuit breaker, the money that we receive for our special ed students. Um, and then the bottom part is the personal services and uh, transportation costs, fuel, et cetera. Uh, so as you can see for FY23, we are projecting a $13.6 million budget that is balanced. So I don't want to put you on the spot. Um, I'm not sure if you have the numbers, but for those that are new um, to this, compared to when we used to lease our busing to now we own our busing, would you have that just so they can see what a huge difference it is right now owning our busing for the next few years that is it's yeah. definitely a savings for us because we used to yeah we I have all those projections that when we came to the committee last year so we'll so right now you're looking at what we're asked you know from um, the 12.1 million um, that's actually would be asking for the city probably if we didn't own our own buses would be asking the city for about 15 million. Um, because for a student's contracts would be up probably, well now with inflation, you could see an 8% increase in what they're charging us now for buses. So, um, so again, you'll see, you'll see us saving a lot more, we're, cause a lot of it, we're in the second year, we're now hiring the rest of the drivers, which is another 70 and then you'll see it start to drop off, um, the expensive cause again, we knew the first two years, the expense would be all up front. Um, but we won't have to ask the city anymore for this, these yeah. kind of numbers. Well, always, they have to always fund the non-net budget because that's their obligation. Um, but they'll be at much lower levels if, um, compared to if we were still going out to bid for first student, it would be right now. Yeah. I, my petition and uh, Aldo, we can get, he did the whole projection last year. Yeah, about 15 he did. Yeah. Million. And we really won't see the cost savings until we have a really good, like a full year with the new buses coming online this summer. Uh, so we'll, we'll be able to give you a better projection. But also, um, these numbers are somewhat deceiving because FY21 and FY22, the city didn't fully fund us. Right. So, you know, we were already behind the eight ball there. Yeah, there were years that we had to, um, and it's well documented how we had to go back in front of the city council to get us funded for, um, we were only funded, I think, once through February. Um, and we had to go back to the council and ask them to, fund us for the rest of the school year at the time um, because I think we were short two million and um, it, we would have had of you know pretty much 
canceled buses for high school kids or we would have had to change the walkout from a mile and a half to two miles and the high school would have went to two and a half miles we would have had a cut but the city thankfully always have has come up with the with the revenue to make sure we've been able to keep our bus and services the same I had only asked that question just so you could clarify because we we were looking at different avenues so this is huge for us to be able to have our own busing because when I first came on just we were leasing them for that price point and owning them over probably within the next three years we'll, we'll probably notice a huge difference probably between the next two and a half three years with our budget if I'm correct then we'll start seeing yep. a huge savings where we were looking you know we weren't able at certain points we weren't able to provide busing and we were looking for different avenues what do we do how do, how do we save on this so I mean that that's awesome to be able to do this and add to our fleet which Absolutely. is wonderful yep. Chris what, so, what part in here is also um, shows the crossing guards that's, so that's, that's under personal that's, that's under personal under, yeah under personal services yeah under the, the 9.2 million okay yep thanks and for adding that that's not only crossing that's all the drivers now that's all yeah that's yeah. all the drivers all the dispatchers that number the, you used to see the mechanics was just busing you know. yeah the numbers you used no, to so, see yeah, there that's a lot of money yeah in because guys. you see wow it went up to that much in personal services it used to only be about nine hundred thousand or a million because Barely it was mil just yeah. for crossing Barely guys a million. Yep. but now that you see it that at night that's basically all the bus driver's salaries that's in there as well which is our numbers were like that just for leasing the busing if i'm oh, correct yeah, yeah. The, the, exactly. so well, here it just yeah. it's it busing control. and personnel and yeah. so no perfect is the other revenue only circuit breaker yes so altogether circuit breaker would be about three million dollars do we have any risk in losing that or with the student heads going down like i just want to make sure no that one is based on um special education numbers and out of district placement is part of that and transportation yep. that has only gone up even in the lean years that has gone up uh they have fully funded it uh, for this year again and it should be they'll be adding to it as well correct and special needs costs continue to increase so i don't see that number ever okay. going down right right no nope the twenty um thousand is uh in the collective bargaining agreement with the union so there's always usually a lot of times a lot of it goes unused but it's in the contract with the bea for obviously professional development um and you know there's trips that they go on to uh, you know when you're looking at curriculum um we our bilingual department just did a presentation um on how we worked through the pandemic with um with our english language learners and, and their families and how we stayed connected and um so they actually did it. it was a presentation that kelly jones did and um you know about and because we, we were recognized in a book about what we did through the pandemic with our, our families that speak english as a spec second language so and i'm proud to say that in three years that i've been superintendent i have not traveled out of the state <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's it's part of the agreement. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, when Aldo was here, he wouldn't even let me drive to Fall River for a conference. So I wouldn't oh, yeah, even yeah, get yeah, reimbursed yeah. for that. <laughs> yeah. So, and hopefully he's watching because he'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, if he is, we miss him. Yeah. So get well, get well, get better soon, Aldo. We missed you. Um, so w was that it with the presentations, that's, Chris? Yeah, that's okay. It, if anybody has any other questions, sure. Anyone else have any questions or comments? Any clarification that you need, Mr. Sullivan? Yeah, Chris. Sure. On the uh, net school spending. Okay. There's $5.1 million in SS3. Sure. I thought we spent it all on the, the other We night. did. This is just a projection. So when, uh, if you recall, when we talked about the custodians, I like to take a piece that's in the actual budget right now yep. to sort of cover expenses 
so to, to cover shortfalls, to make up for the for the, for the loss. SO3, so yes. that's so the budget that I presented to you for SO three, some of that's already locally funded. So we're pulling some of those expenses to pick up in the ESSER. So that's why I bring that in. Okay. So if we didn't have the ESSER, the shortfall would be greater. Yeah, a lot greater. Yeah, correct. Thank you. Yep. Well, Mr. Sullivan, you and I both know. What is it? One point five million is nothing compared to. Is it when you had 10 million, 16 million, yep. well, um, 6 million? I mean, just every year it seemed to get worse. And we, we, we say this isn't going to get worse. And it, and it, it was it's awful. An, it's important to note that usually, even in the poor years, when the House and Senate go through, we've been on average getting an extra 2 million out of that But when it comes out of the House and, and then the Joint Committee. Correct. We usually end up with at least, usually around $2 million more than what's on the governor's budget. I did talk to Mike Brady today, and he asked if there was anything, you know, we need to get him things if you, if, you know, you're in, you know, we can talk to him before the end of the month. Uh, I told him it'd be nice for them to put the pothole fund back, what they had last year for, um, for cities and towns that lost enrollment. And I said that would be nice if we could make up uh, for that $12 million, if we could get some of that back as pothole funding for, um, you know, for kids that we're going to have and continue to move in. Um, so he said that's, you know, he would obviously bring that forward. Um, so that was something that I said we definitely want to see the pothole fund for in the in decline in enrollment. Because a lot of, most every place is are dealing with this issue with, the, you know, enrollment drops. Some less than others. Some last year, like, far, uh, I think it was t Far River really didn't get any new money in, in Student Opportunity Act because they were down so many kids. This year, they went up again, so their Student Opportunity Act is better than ours, and now we're in the same, pretty much the same boat as them okay. this year than last year. Yeah. And just to, uh, so the 1.5 million variance, it's really not a big deal because I remember Aldo and I, a few years back, working on a, a shortfall of almost $20 million. Yeah, I remember that. That's difficult. That's a big pill to swallow. So really, the 1.5 million, again, it's preliminary. You know, there's a lot of things to look at. There's mm -hmm. you know health costs to look at. So, but we just wanted to give all of you an overview of, you know, where we're at right now. So, thank you. Yep. Any of the members have any um, any comments, questions? Okay. Well, thank thank you, um, Chris, for the thank presentation. You all. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. We appreciate nice job, that. Chris. Thank you. Um, super, uh, let's see, item number two on our agenda is the um, early retirement incentive. Superintendent Thomas, if you want to update us sure. on that. So um, we always, uh, we have in the past, we have not done this over the last two years, but I'd like to come back to the committee and allow me in a limited basis to offer an early retirement incentive for uh, BEA members and members of our other unions. Um, this usually has helped us. Obviously, um, people that take the incentive are at the higher end of the scale. Um, and obviously, we look to replace with people that obviously come in at lower steps, which saves the district money. Um, we've done this. Several other districts are doing it as well. This, has, this is just a one-time cash payment. Um, and it would be just once it doesn't add years it doesn't do anything for teachers retirement or any other anybody else's retirement it's just basically a, you'd have to in, in the stipulations like you, you you can't already be in for retirement um you know you'd have to retire right away this year this this the lawyer writes up the language for us and runs it through uh the attorneys for the unions and then you know we put it out we gauge it we always limit it usually we do like 20 per union because Chris uses this year's money to pay for it. Um, and it's been something that has helped us, you know, bring some new staff in. And mm -hmm. this year could help us again further balance our budget. So was it the, um, you, we, you had just mentioned a potential 20 early, re is that? It would be, it, usually it's each union is okay. a limit. Because you obviously if you have 200 people come in, you can't sure. afford it. And you know, then you obviously couldn't replace them either. So it's been very, it's not been used a lot, even in the years we offered, um, it, it, maybe we get out of all unions, you might get eight. I mean, not a lot of people take advantage of it. Um, so, but it's, it's a good something, it's good to offer because you get to, again, see what you can save a position and 
I remember in years yeah. past, that was one we of the um, incentives we would um, offer to be right. able to help us with our budget. Right. Um, so, so when when um, so for them to do the early retirement incentive, um, what's like the turnaround time? We would ask know. them quickly. So okay. basically, would put an would put a e- um, email out asking for people interest if you're interested, and then that would gauge how many, you know, how many spots we could offer to each union. Because if it's too much, we have to then pull back. Okay. So it's anywhere between we we offer anywhere between ten thousand for non-certified up to twenty-five thousand for certified. Okay. And um, what's the turnaround time that they need to note? Like, we you send this ask out and people to uh, to let us know within. We would want to know basically by April vacation. For we'd give them, we'd ask people to do it pretty quickly. Okay. So it would be that week before April vacation. We would need to know. Okay. So within the next few weeks. Next few weeks. Yeah, yep. Yeah, we have three week. weeks to April vacation after One, two, this. Three, probably about right. four. Four. Well, we said three days. Thank Ms. you. Mrs. Mendez Thank is counting down the days. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from a teacher. Four weeks and three days. <laughs> Someone's counting down the days to vacation. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you, Superintendent. Any of the members have any questions? Mrs. Ehlers? Well, um, <clears throat> end of the school year be their retirement? Like, what's the timeline on when they'll actually retire? It would be June, take, June would, 30th. Okay, of this they year. Retire. They'd have to and retire the, okay. on June 30th, yeah. Like you can't say I'll take half this year and then half the next next. No, year I didn't know if you'd give year. them like till June of 2023 or something like that. I wasn't no, sure, but take it now and you have to retire June. Is your hat? Would you hurry? Yeah, right. Thank <laughs> no, you. Yeah. no, it's it's something that no I, has helped us in the past. A lot of districts are doing it, yeah. um, and you know it's. No, I think it's, I think it's a good idea to be honest with you. Thank you. Anyone, um, any other members with any questions? So if, this one I'd need a motion on because you have Okay, to so we need a motion to approve um, the early retirement, retirement incentive, incentive for, for all unions, for, all unions um, for 2022. For this year, 2022. For this year, 2022. Um, who would like to make the motion? I'll make it. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Can we get a second? Second. So motion was made made by Mrs. Ehlers and seconded by Mr. Sullivan. Um, can we get a roll call vote, uh, Mr. Homer? Yes. Mrs. Ehlers. Yes. Mrs. Mendez. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. And I'm um, I'm a yes, Joyce Asak. So that's unanimous. Okay. Um, we can go on to item agenda item number three. Other business? Does anyone have any other business for finance this evening? Well, it doesn't look like anyone's got any other business. So um, that would probably conclude our finance meeting for the evening. Um, can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Okay. Um, Second. Ms. <laughs> okay. Mrs. <laughs> Mendez made the motion. Mrs. Ehlers seconded. Um, roll call vote to get out. Um, Mr. Homer? Yes. Mrs. Ehlers? Yes. Mrs. Mendez? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. And I'm a yes, Joyce Asak. Thank you and have a good evening. We are going to resume at 7 p.m. Um, for our school committee meeting. So uh, we're just going to take a short break and then start our meeting um, in about a half hour. All right. Thank you.